How is the Qur'an organized? Its 114 surahs are not in chronological order. Some of the earliest revelations are found all the way at the end of the book, and some of the last revelations given to the Prophet ﷺ are found all the way in the beginning. It's not in size order, clearly, and it's definitely not in subject order as the subject repeats itself and some things that have been brought up earlier come up over again and again and again and again and maybe sometimes in more detail than before. It's not even about the organization of surahs, it's also what's happening inside of a single surah. Large surahs like Baqarah or Ali Imran or Nisa or Maida, surahs like that you'll find lots of different subjects all bunched together in a way that for some casual reader might be surprising. They might not even see a connection between where this passage ends and the next one begins and why is it going from this subject to another? It seems like it belongs in a different chapter altogether. Let's take a step back and think about the author of the Qur'an, Allah Himself. I want to tell you two things about Allah and the way Allah does things. One, He created everything around us with Al-Mizan. He says, as sama rafa'aha wa wada Al-Mizan. That He elevated the sky above us and placed a scale he placed a balance. Allah puts balance in all things that He created like He did inside of our bodies. Every organ is perfectly sized, perfectly weighted, every bone perfectly designed to fit into the next, every ligament. The same way every tree and every animal, the size of them, the weight of them, the proportions of them, the food they're going to eat, all of it is perfectly and harmoniously designed. This is Allah's creation. Hada khalqullah. On the one hand, there is balance and harmony in what He creates. And on the other hand, He says, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمٍ that the skies and the earth have qiyam in them, qawam in them, that the human being was created with taqweem. What is this word? It means purposefulness, uprightness. Not only are things designed with harmony and purpose and symmetry like the veins on a leaf or the perfection of a crystal or what's going on inside of a single subatomic particle, but actually all of this serves a beautiful purpose. It has an agenda. There's a reason for which it was made the way it was made. Purposeful, creative, organization. That is the design of Allah. And that's the same Allah that gave us the ability to speak. So how can I believe that the one who gave us and created all around us the perfect examples of harmony and organization did not address harmony and organization and structure within his own speech? I wanted to take whatever I found on the subject that I found very compelling and beautiful and organize it into a course and present it. This is the first of such courses called Heavenly Order. I do personally believe the Qur'an is in heavenly order and there's a purpose and benefit in understanding why is the book organized the way that it is. I'm going to try to take every level of organization from the ayah to the passage to the structure of an entire surah and then also to understand how the surahs are organized from the first all the way to the 114th through the course of this study. I hope you'll join me for the study and I hope that it really impacts your reading of the Qur'an. Even if you don't know any Arabic, you have no background and you're just reading a translation of the Qur'an, I would think this would, be, this would go a great way, uh, a long way in helping you understand the, the divine logic behind the organization of Allah's words. May Allah make us sincere students of His book. I hope to see you signing up for this course.